Hey everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Escalon, book one. Um, once again, and <laughs> I promise this is not going to be every single episode, but uh, I have to address a couple more things before we get back into the gameplay. I'll try to make it quick. Um, I'll try. Uh, so, first of all, uh, this episode, or as of recording this episode, the first one has not been uploaded to YouTube. Um, or not published on YouTube. So, um, sorry for not taking any hints that you might have given me um, into account for obvious reasons that was not possible. Um, so everything up to now has been just me playing and making my own assumptions and yeah, uh, making many wrong assumptions as it turns out. But um, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, as far as gameplay tips go, please keep them coming if you've already been giving them on the previous episodes. Thank you, it's appreciated. Um, that being said, I do not encourage backseating. I guess, I hope that's unnecessary to mention specifically, but I guess I, I now I did, just to make that absolutely clear. Um, however, I'm sure there are things that are easy to mess up that are not going to be clear just from playing the game and paying attention to what, what the game tells you and teaches you about its systems and things that are gonna maybe lead to problems that are gonna be hard or even impossible to fix later on and I guess those things, those kinds of things I'm totally okay or general hints and tips. Um, yes, so that's one thing. Um, the other is... I, I, I've uh, talked a lot about it in the previous episode about how I was unsure about the viability of my character and you know those kinds of things and um, admittedly, I had not read the manual before starting the game, which is, you know, a thing that was, <laughs> that's maybe, maybe a bit foolish with an old scale, uh, old school game like this, because back in the day of the games that inspired this game, that was perfectly normal and completely expected that people, the players would read the, the extensive manual. I did that earlier <laughs> for, for, I mean, I, I wasn't really into PC gaming in the, in the era of, of the Ultimate games and, and whatnot, but um, that's beside the point. Anyway, um, I did read the manual now, and it turns out that it doesn't really give you any more information than the game itself does, so that would not have helped. Um, I did make a couple of assumptions about how certain mechanics might work. Um, for example, I assumed that daggers would be viable because uh, there must be rogue-specific bonuses of some sort, right? Some some form of extra damage or sneak attacks or critical uh, automatic critical strikes upon surprising an enemy. All those things. And I was just, you know, guessing and hoping that maybe some of those things would prove to be true in the end. Um, but uh, eventually I, I did look up some info online. Just some rogue-specific stuff. And it turns out that, unfortunately, there are no such things. As, for, as far as I could find out, neither moving silently nor hiding in shadows will ever allow you to sneak up on enemies. Well, sneak up on enemies, yes, but not deal any extra damage. Um, nor do daggers have any special bonuses at all. In fact, I read specifically that daggers are just outright the worst weapon class. Just outright inferior. And uh, yeah, it, it's just unfortunate. And for that, for those reasons, because now I have more knowledge that I didn't have, I decided to change my character just slightly. I did look up whether a character editor existed or a save file editor, and it turns out that yes, it, di it does exist. And I made a s some slight adjustments, uh, nothing major. I tried to keep it as. Um, non-invasive as, as possible. Basically, I took away my seven points that I had in short blades and put four of them into swords. Um, and the remaining three points I used to get the bow skill. Because I figure, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna be a kind of rogue, like a lightly armored warrior, fighter. Since there is no dual wheeling and, and there are no specific bonuses for daggers, I'm gonna go with swords. It's a little bit lame. I was thinking about maybe taking uh, cleaving weapons instead and using some... We, we've seen the Kama weapon, the kind of a sickle axe type. 
And while more interesting, maybe, you know, swords are kind of boring, is the problem. I, f I always feel kind of bad for picking wep uh, uh, picking swords, especially long swords, as my main weapon in any game, because it's just so standard. But they are typically also very good, and, you know, I guess realistically, in a in a realistic medieval fant fantasy medieval setting, swords would be the go-to weapon for for a good reason. I mean, they're popular for a reason. And so, I mean, why not? It's certainly perfectly reasonable for my character be, to be using swords, to be using the most effective and efficient weapon available to him. Um, that being said, unfortunately, while I'm pretty sure I did have a, an iron longsword at one point, I w did not have enough gold to afford one. I didn't um, change my inventory at all. I just sold the three daggers that I had and bought this iron short sword, which, which does have base damage too, which is already twice as good as my dagger. Um, now... Since I only have four points in swords, where I had seven in daggers before, I am dealing the same damage, uh, instead of one point more, I guess. And I have slightly worse to hit, I think. I think I was at nine and eleven before, but as soon as I put some more points into swords, that should catch up and even surpass the daggers. And then, of course, uh, hopefully I'll find or be able to afford a longsword which has base damage three, sooner or later. And then, of course, um, well, yeah, I, I gave myself bow skill because those should benefit from my dexterity. And I also like the idea of having um, a ranged alternative, maybe to draw some enemies out of a group and things like that. I'm, I didn't change any of my other skills, even though I did read that, well, hidden shadows and move silently are... Uh, some say they are overpowered, some say they are useless. I guess it depends on your perspective. Um, they're overpowered in that even relatively low skill levels apparently allow you to be completely invisible, even in, in well, maybe not broad daylight, but even out in the open, and be so silent that no enemies will ever detect you. But since there are no bonuses combat-related, um, that seems, you know, kind of pointless. Sure, I, I guess there must be situations where sneaking around enemies might be useful to steal a specific item without having to fight through lots of powerful enemies, but, you know, um, generally speaking, I, I guess I want to, I definitely want to fight enemies rather than avoid them, because avoiding enemies, unfortunately, does not give you any experience. So, yeah, long story short, I'll um, basically play as a lightly armed, more agile fighter type, instead of a pure rogue, just because a pure rogue has literally no bonuses at all. Which I find slightly disappointing, but, you know, it's what it is. Also, a thing I am noticing, um, apparently the map does not get retroactively updated after your cartography skill has improved. Uh, right now with cartography 2, I think? Yeah, I think it's only 2, right? Yes. Um, we now color in the, the trees in green, which is nice. It uh, looks like we'll have to re-explore old areas if we want to update the map. So combat-wise, we should be pretty much at the same level as before, but we have better, you know, better perspective for for future developments. I'm still probably going to put some some points into into sneaky skills, so I certainly can't see the situational use for those. Maybe I'll focus on moves silently rather than hide in shadows. I don't know. Maybe I'll put the occasional point into both of those. Yeah, so the main change was just to go for a more viable weapon. So I would at least not completely, uh, you know, cripple myself. The art of brewing. Oh, we had that before, but... Okay, interesting question. Will this give me a skill point again? Probably not. Knowledge of Alchemy has improved, it says, but it did not actually do that. Which makes perfect sense. But I will be able to sell that. Which would give me enough money to, just barely enough money to buy a bow, but no, uh, well, I guess a bow and three arrows. So I guess I'll hold off for now. Also, technically, we are. We should still be on the, the northern part of the Aradel Island, right? Yeah, I guess the map does show that there's a little bit of woodland 
Yeah, okay. And in fact, just taking three more steps would have confirmed that we are indeed still by the coast here. Water is still not shown on the map, it looks like. No. I guess maybe Cartography 3 will do that. Well, alright. Fair enough. Uh, let's take a look at this building, I guess. I don't know. I don't think we have been told about this at all. So I have no idea what to expect here. Maybe... Huh? Oh, I accidentally picked up the torch. Oh, hello. There is someone living here. I... For some reason I was convinced that this was an abandoned house. Whoops. Hello, sir? You see a tall, thin man. Almost immediately you notice that his right eye is missing and in its place is just a fleshy hole. You. The other eye is sunken and dark. His skin is pale and sickly as if he hasn't seen sunlight in years. Greetings to you! My name is Lurik. Lurik? Wait. Oh, that's the uh, the graveyard... Yeah, the director of, the, of Eversleep Cemetery. Okay. I knew that name was familiar. Director of Eversleep Cemetery. I assume you have come to inquire about funeral services for a loved one, or perhaps you wish to make arrangements for yourself. <laughs> arrangements for yourself. Lurik smiles at you politely, which you find creepier than if he had not smiled at all. Uh, yeah, he seems like the creepy type. Perhaps you could tell me more about Eversleep Cemetery? Certainly! Eversleep Cemetery is located due west of here, and it is the finest resting grounds in all of Eastern Theramore. Uh, Theramore. <laughs> Theram I'm surprised I, it took me this long to to say Theramore accidentally, which, uh, in case you're not familiar, is a place in uh, World of Warcraft. Or, I guess, in the Warcraft universe. We handle all the details of the funeral and have an assortment of coffins, caskets, and private vaults to suit your needs. We offer traditional ground burials as well as internment within our private crypt, where your loved ones... Our private crypt? Not your? Where your loved ones can rest safely until the very end of time. Do you desire cremation? No problem. Embalmment? Our pleasure. I'll personally see to it that the needs of you and your family are taken care of. Why don't we begin the paperwork now to secure a spot for you and your loved ones? Um, yeah. Thanks. I mean, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I'm not planning to die that soon. I mean, I guess I'm gonna die a lot, but not permanently. I need a key to enter the main crypt. Uh, I mean, I kind of doubt that he's just going to hand it to us. Because we have been told to try and find a way to get the key from him. Didn't really sound like just, you know, asking him nicely. I'd like to check out the quality of your crypt before committing to anything. Ah, okay. An eternity is a very long time to have to lie in an unsatisfactory tomb. May I have a key to unlock the crypt so I may take a peek inside? I mean, we can try to to use our speech skills to, you know, talk him into giving us the key, or we could just bluntly ask, I guess, between these two options. Sure. I'm sorry, but we have had quite a problem with vandalism recently, and I cannot give a key to just anyone. Perhaps with a small, non-refundable deposit put towards your intent to purchase a plot, I will know you are serious, and then I will give you a key to the vault. 200 gold pieces... The vault, period. 200 gold pieces would be a sufficient deposit, I suppose. I mean, I guess it's not... That's not that much money, but it's more than I have, and more than I would like to spend, so... Yeah, I cannot afford it. Sorry to hear that. Well, we do offer pauper burials as well. There's no shame in putting yourself or dear or, or your dear mother in a leaky pine box if that is all you can afford. You jerk. Uh, you don't mind if I just look around your place a little bit, do you? Um, <laughs> I'm tempted to just take that from him, but okay. why don't we take a look in his basement? Oh, this is dark. Wow, I can't see anything. I mean. I can barely make out outlines, but this is this seems a lot darker than the other um, dungeon I was in. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, he's, he is, he's quite a quite the he has quite the salamander problem. Wow, there are a lot of these. Thankfully, they're really not that tough anymore. Oh. Nice. Just in time. 
Perfect, wow. Okay, there's another one. Oh, hello. Um, sure. I'm not sure why there would be gold pieces in a in an empty coffin, but or in any kind of coffin for that matter. Really hardly taking any damage from these things. But it didn't change my armor or armor skills at all, so that must just be pure luck. Purely coincidental. Hmm. I mean, this is not the crypt, right? This is just his private cellar, his basement. So I'm not sure... Well, I guess it's, it makes sense that he would be storing some coffins here. Sure, I'll take that skull. Oh. And this ring of vigor, there, there it is. I was totally expecting to find one one of these days. Oh well, that's uh, 95 gold I could have saved and invested in a bow and arrows, for example. Oh well. Okay, no key there. I wonder though, maybe his key... Hmm, maybe he has this key in here? Uh, sure. He can't see me. Come on, 30% is pretty good. Aw, oh. oh, come on. At least I'm not breaking the lockpick. No. There we go. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, sorry man, I kind of have to. I didn't really have to take that... What was it? Uh, amethyst? Am no, Ambergris. That's something quite different. Ambergris is like... Um... Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, that's like from, from a whale, I think. Okay, got the key. I guess we are playing as a rogue, so it's only natural to acquire it that way. It was also very easy and very badly guarded, so... Obviously it's his own fault. I had actually completely forgotten that the game had advised me to visit or to, you know, yeah, visit the graveyard keeper to get the key first. So that was a complete coincidence that I actually stumbled upon his, his little house there. to find out if we can recolor existing maps? It looks like it. Yep. Sure enough. I mean, otherwise that would be really bad. If, you, if for example, you explored most of the game with bad cartography skill and then later on, not only does it not automatically get updated to better, to better maps, but it would also lock it in that way forever. But, yeah. It doesn't do that, so that's good. Ever sleep symmetry. Okay. Right, this looks like a dead end. It's also about to get dark, so I guess I'm going to be and doing some camping to pass the time, and maybe we'll have some visitors at night. Yeah, it's definitely getting dark. There might be a path through the forest here. Yep. A little bit concealed. Huh. It might be in here. Some elixirs. 
the path does continue. Hmm. Actually, it looks like the cemetery might not be that big. For some reason, I was picturing something really huge. Oh. What am I hearing? Some kind of animal, right? Oh, well. Okay. Right, we are fighting in the dark. And I killed it very, very quickly, so that's nice. Okay, let's try camping here because I'm otherwise doomed to guarantee to miss things. Huh? Nearby sound. Oh. That would be a Noxamander. I am silent. No longer. Please don't poison me. Uh oh. Gee, oh, this is not great. Come on. Oh, it is still dark. Uh, I should probably turn on the light. Yeah. I am now poisoned. And actually, I cannot. I mean, I, I could take off my shield and put on a torch, giving the enemy two free attacks. Thankfully, though, we are both suffering from the darkness, so it's still kind of even. Ow! Don't crit me! Jesus. Um, I feel like I've figured out at some point... Wait, the map shows something purple here. Is there something... There is something lootable. Wow, how did I not see this empty barrel here at all? Okay, never mind. Um, I feel like I've figured out at some point that uh, poison does fade on its own? Oh. Maybe not, though. Okay, fine. I guess I'll get the poison potion. Not poison potion. Uh, well, it's gone now. The uh, antidote recipe, eventually. Sure. I'll rest it a little bit. Beating heart sound is still slightly audible. Interesting. But I'm going to regenerate some more health just by walking. Uh, well, I mean, these normal salamanders shouldn't be so bad. Oh, I was not expecting it to go through here. Seriously? Well, that's really bad. Oh, steel double battle axe. Well, now I'm sure regretting not picking cleaving weapons. Just because. Man. That would have been a really good weapon. Too bad I'm probably going to die on the way back to town. I mean, no, that's not true. But wait. <laughs> the priest is not even going to be able to heal me. I feel like I've gotten rid of poison without using a without drinking an antidote potion at one point. Am I making that up? Uh, I, I mean, I guess I'm gonna try resting at the inn, if I can make it there. Uh, this is not going so well. Am I taking the most effective, the most efficient path? I guess... Well, this is a pretty long walk. Should I risk trying to go through here? Oh, it doesn't look like there's... It looks like there might be a connection over this way. 
of some sort. Um, maybe? No, not really. Antidote potion, maybe? No. I don't think I can go through here. Can I? Nope. Of course not. Nope. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. It's gonna be fine. I mean, I guess I don't have to wait, but, you know. I suppose if I survive... Oh. Uh, well, if I survive... by resting at the end... I will still have made... Come on. Come on, please. Game. Don't make me waste more time than absolutely necessary. Um, I will still have made a profit if I sell that axe. Why is the game insisting on making me get stuck on random trees? Oh, wait! Poison did run out! Now I feel a little bit cheated. How much will this sell for? Um, well, not enough. Although, that being said, I think a sword was... 300, a longsword was 320? Is that worth it? I mean, maybe? I do have quite a few things to sell. I should be able to afford both a longsword and a bow and some arrows. But maybe I'd rather get an extra antidote. Well, this expedition was kind of short-lived. I guess technically I could just turn around immediately. Maybe restore some health by resting. But, I mean, at this point I'm basically back to town. Or I was basically back to town, so I might as well. It's not like I'm under any time constraints or anything. Other than, you know, real, real life time. Um, let's see here. Oh, wait. She does not sell any antidote. That is unfortunate. Wait. No, that's haste. Well, so much for that. Okay, um, but she will buy this. Wait. Oh, right. The worth of the item is 95. That means it will sell for half that, and I'll have to pay double that. That's rough. Oh, well. So Cat's Eyes is basically Infravision, allowing you to see in the dark without producing light yourself, so it does allow you to see while sneaking past enemies in the dark, for example, whereas using a torch would make you visible, logically. I mean, that's still a lot of money. Definitely enough to buy a longsword for 320 gold. Sure, I guess. What else would I pay money for, right? And of course, now we don't have enough. Well, maybe we do. Hold on. I could try and do math, or I could just do it like this. Yeah, this is only going to sell for 15, which, yes, would allow me to afford a bow, but hardly any arrows. So I guess, once again, I'm going to say thanks but no thanks. Yeah. I will make more money from the next expedition. I guess this time I'm going to um, not necessarily just take it if I get poisoned, but maybe I'll actually reload. I, I'm going to occasionally do that. I'm, I don't know. I'm gonna, as with everything, as with, you know, role-playing versus playing the game, I want to find a balance that I can, that I'm personally okay with between, you know, min-maxing and take, taking things as they come. Uh, sure, let's take a room. I could probably rest in town. 
relatively safely if the game allows resting in town. I guess it's worth fi figuring out. Okay. Sense of uneasiness. You conclude that resting in this area is not a good idea. Hmm. Okay, so I guess that's the same message that you would get in an actually unsafe area. It's just the game telling you that, no, you can't rest here. You can't rest here, even. I could rest here. I could probably still be attacked by enemies here, but then I, if I really wanted to, I could lure them back into town and the guard would uh, slaughter them as as he did with those slimes that one time. Or was it slimes? He did kill something that that followed me to town. Okay. Well, anyway. Where were we? Right. We were here. I suppose I never went here, huh? I guess I must have followed the river south immediately. Just having the, the dots, the walls in different colors is already making such a huge difference. I wonder how detailed the map is gonna, is gonna get. One thing that, that I am technically interested in, but I didn't look up yet, is uh, what the maximums for the different skills are, and if they are the same for all skills. Because I read at one point, without specifically trying to look that up, that apparently two points in alchemy is all you need to be able to brew everything. So I don't know, does that mean that alchemy literally gets maxed out at two points, which seems kind of silly? Or is it just that um, further points do something, but they're just universally considered not worth it or something? Because they just, I don't know, maybe... I don't know what what that could what the skill could possibly affect if not, you know, literally your ability to successfully create certain recipes. So what is this? Salamander pit. Keep out. Okay, but I saw a treasure there. If this does lead to this place. Hold on a sec. Right, uh, so I'm back after 10-15 minutes. We were just about to enter the salamander pit. Ooh, a bronze buckler. Why, yes, thank you. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like um, better weapons or armor ever have any stat requirements. At least I haven't found any. You know, or any skill level requirements, so just skill level 1 allows you to use any item of the type effectively. That's really good. I like that. There is also an one Noxamander. Hmm. This is where where having a bow might come in handy to lure an enemy. I am silent now, so technically they should lose track of me. Okay, they did. Hmm. I mean, the normal salamanders really aren't that bad, but... I guess I'd still rather fight them one by one. Hmm, and of course now the Noxamander is coming. I'll wait for that one to turn around. Okay. Uh, still. <laughs> okay, I should have just fought the salamanders. Wow, this is getting worse. Hmm. Okay, that one should have seen me. Right? Okay. I guess the Noxamander heard me. Okay, come this way. No? Okay, now they know where, where I am. Well, wish me luck. Although, now we know that, or we have it confirmed, that poison does go away. Or has a chance to, I guess. 
I guess at one time when I was... So I got really quite lucky fighting this thing this time around. Um, yeah, that one time where I was resting, I guess, I guess I was just really unlucky for the poison to stay active that whole time. Or maybe poison have poison can have different levels, like internally. Who knows? Adrenaline. Okay. okay. Thinking cap. Int plus two. I mean, I don't think that's really going to do anything for me. Scrolls and tangle. Healing elixir too. Hello. Some good loot. Um, I mean, this is as good as my current cap plus extra intelligence. And we'll push it to eleven, which I guess. I suppose it does push it past 10, which would allow me... Huh, I wonder. I guess it depends whether um, the game takes uh, your combined stats with item bonuses into account when checking for minimum uh, skill requirements, but I'm pretty sure that that one scroll that I tried to read uh, said that it required 10 intelligence to cast. It might, ha it might be 10 intelligence and the base... Uh, the first level of the respective magic skill. That being said, I kind of forgot that I'm actually not that I'm actually only one point off of int ten, which might be the minimum requirement to to actually learn some spells. Hmm, might be maybe worth investing in some very basic um, magic ability at some point to be able to cast some. Minor support skills. I mean, I'm not. I'm absolutely not planning to um, develop this character to a, to a full-fledged spellcaster, like an offensive spellcaster. I'm definitely planning to do most of my fighting, or basically all of my fighting, with um, with my sword. But uh, it might come in handy to have some spells. Now this is divination, so this would require wisdom, I guess, which I'm a bit further away from. Still, within two levels, I could reach 10 base uh, score in both intelligence and wisdom. Might be worth considering, but I guess I'll uh, think about that more once the time comes. This parchment appears to be part of a journal entry. After scouting several different areas, I think the pit area is the best place to store my valuables until order is restored in this region. The salamanders won't disturb the chests, and everyone knows best to stay away from this area. Everyone knows best to, wait, best to stay away from this area. Yes, I think the salamanders will make perfect guards. The invisibility potion will keep me hidden from the beasts until I am finished stashing my belongings. It is common knowledge that salamanders hunt using sight, not smell. Or is it the other way around? No matter. It will only take me a few moments to place the chests. Well, that looks to be a crude map of the pit area scrawled under this entry. Well, I mean... Okay, fair enough. I don't think you can actually do anything with the pit itself. No. Thankfully, you cannot fall in, so there's that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a decent plan. I guess he had a little bit, a little tiny little detail mixed up there. Oh well. Good for me. Hmm. I'm also, well, obviously, the cemetery itself is going to be confined. To, well,. Either it's going to be confined to this relatively small area, which might be because um, there's probably at least one tomb that I can enter and that's going to have an, a proper dungeon below it, or it might actually connect over to the to uh, another map to the west. However, hmm, now I wonder if if that icon that I have been wondering about, that marking on the map above the Grimhold text. Uh, might 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 be supposed to signify the graveyard, the cemetery. Hmm. I mean, it doesn't really look like anything. It looks like a gray square or dot with some shadowing underneath. It's kind of yeah. It really doesn't look like anything. But it's also clearly supposed to be something, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's hard hard to say what the intention was. Um. Either way, I'm. I mean, I. I guess I could finish exploring this map first, but I kind of want to take a look at the cemetery 
before moving further north. I have no particular business north of here, so... Why don't I go ahead and uh, do what, what I originally came for? Of course, if the, the crypt is anywhere near as big as that random basement, that random blacksmith basement, then uh, this will definitely take at least part of the next episode before I um, before I emerge with the key, but we'll see. Maybe it's not such a big deal. Just getting the key is not the only thing that's required after all. I'll have to take it quite far south. Although I guess once I'm done here, uh, that will be the first good opportunity to actually come to think of it. I could have... wait. Oh, I guess I never interacted with the uh, with the sign by the Grimhold East entrance. Um, good that I remembered now, or was remembered now. But we do have Aradel unlocked, of course, for quick travel. I guess I could have used that when I was poisoned, huh? I should have at least tried. Maybe the game would have told me that you can't do that while poisoned or something, because obviously that's that would be a, a way to just bypass the entire, you know, losing health over time problem. Okay, let's see here. I am silent now. Maybe only one bat is going to make it here? No, it seems to have worked out. Oh, I... I guess I should have known that it was already in range. Or I in its range. And it is getting dark. Hmm. Perfect timing, as always. As it say here. My two sisters buried beneath the soil. One was forgotten, the other was spoiled. Hmm. Annabelle Brumbottom. Beloved Angel. Oh, 22 years. Come on, please. Stop the clocks from ticking. Make the sun disappear. Happiness for me is ending because you're gone, my dear. Okay, very poetic. Nothing. Our little Angel Lara. Your death brings our ending. Rest now, my lovely wife. Meribeth. Meribeth Orn died 661. Nothing. Uh, now they're coming, of course. PDW the third. Rip. Okay, the bat can just fly across terrain that I don't think I can walk across. Although, maybe I can walk there. I'm having such a much better time fighting these things than I had previously. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, I definitely cannot walk there. That's what I expected. What was this? Nothing. William Brown. Klaus, the ogre trainer. He found out too late that they couldn't be. What? They couldn't be trained, I guess? Yeah, well... Alright. So dark and deep, the secrets we keep. Hmm. Here's the grave of good old Lars, man about town, now underground. Hmm. Mother Lonstem, died 688, rest in peace. Grindstone Charlie, died of poisoning? Okay, Grindstone Charlie. There's supposed to be a joke in there? Not sure. Rupert Lamb. Okay. Well, there's some sort of building here, but it's definitely too dark to really be able to see anything at this point. So, sure, let's... Oh, not enough free space, I guess. Oh. Maybe you cannot camp right next to a wall? Or right next to a building for some reason? Who knows? Anyway, resting in, a, in an old graveyard. No problem. And surprisingly, I was not attacked by any zombies or bats. Also, there's absolutely nothing here. I guess I should have known. Yeah, this is actually just the outer wall of the cemetery. Huh? Oh, a casket has been dug up and smashed open. 
The remains of the deceased are scattered about, about and the thieves have nothing of value. The corpse's shattered jawbone suggests they might have been after gold teeth. Well, okay. And who's it? Right. Read those. Okay. And this is where I need the key for. You can feel damp, cool air seeping out from the gaps around the door of this tomb, leading you to believe that behind the seal is not merely a tiny mausoleum, but rather an extensive underground vault. Well, that's exactly what I expected. Oh, the entire thing is just a loading zone. Alright. Or maybe there was just a... Maybe there were stairs just inside the door. Oh. Wait. Target. Uh, partially concealed for darkness. Alright. Okay, that counts. Um... Like misclick. Uh, no ex no access to inner sanctum without escort. Please wait here for crypt attendant. Although the sign recommends you wait for a crypt attendant, you very much doubt that anyone will come to greet you. Well, I mean, I don't have an appointment, so there's that. Let's pick a direction and go, I suppose. Um, I mean, for now I have enough torches. I'll leave this room well lit. Right, I keep forgetting. Such a nice shield, and I can't even use it. Oh well. At least there shouldn't be any traps down here, right? That wouldn't make any sense. Sure, they don't want people in here. Excuse me? How do you open that? Hmm. It does click there. Hmm. Strange. Yeah, they don't want any trespassers, but they they lock the place. Okay, there's a lever on the other side. Oh, really? This small chamber looks to be a holding cell of sorts. Perhaps grave robbers caught in the act are secured here. This does not look like a holding cell at all. These look like holding cells. Also, these are not grave robbers. Hmm. Oh, I guess it's really not a button puzzle, or a switch puzzle at all. It's just literally three doors and three switches. Come on. I could put on my shield in, I guess. See no harm in just opening them all. In fact, there is some stuff here. Nothing amazing, but I'll take it. Okay. This door is locked. Okay, hold on. Maybe we'll find a key. The smell of charred wood and bone hangs in the air here, and the walls are covered in thick soot. This is most certainly a cremation room. Across the floor are scattered bones. Anything of value seems to have already been removed from these remains. Ash appears to be overflowing the urns and incinerators. Hmm. Okay. Well, the, the graveyard keeper said that, or director, uh, told us that they were that they they do everything themselves here. From cremation to embalming. Hmm. Okay, cannot interact with those. Also, the torch seems to be less bright than the previous one. What's up with that? I guess it's just my imagination, but still. Another pretty great axe. Man, I really wish I had picked the slightly less common option of cleaving weapons. Oh well. I'm sure we'll find amazing swords. I mean, that's pretty much guaranteed, so... That's not the point, though. Oh well. Oh well. This is open. Should have checked that first. It does. right next to the door that it opens. Makes sense. Wait. 
filled with thick black and congealed blood. You. That is quite gross. This room smells of the blood that has pooled on this on the cold stone floor. Looking around, you see several hooked tools and knives, suggesting to you that this room is used to prepare corpses for internment. Okay. Give me that torch. Bad was kicking my butt. Or biting my butt, I guess. What have we here? A ma machete. A cleaving weapon, of course. Isn't it technically also some kind of sword? I mean, it's not better than my longsword. Also, I'm not supposed to... They can be stacked? No. They cannot. This door is locked, but can we not just walk around? It looks like this is just the same corridor. I mean, I guess I'm still gonna try because... Picking locks grants experience, well, there goes one lockpick. So long as I have some left, I'm not going to re necessarily reload on any broken lockpick. If it looks like I'm actually going to run out, I might do that. Oh, this is not worth it. I mean, maybe it is for some extra experience. Wow, this is definitely starting to not be worth it. Down three. Oh, come on. <sighs> 62 experience. I mean, it's a decent amount. Is it worth losing four lockpicks? That's 140, uh, 120 gold. That's a lot of money, relatively speaking. Not that much, but it is. Uh, okay. I guess I'm going to quick save and reload from now on, keeping the two lockpicks that I still have. It's probably it w would probably be smarter to actually keep a larger amount and save those for. An actually difficult lock. I I think I got really quite uh, unlucky with this one. Okay, more cells. What are these for? Maybe they're not cells, but just some kind of storage rooms. But still, hmm. I should really be doing a better job picking up all the torches I can. Hmm. Interesting that I was only able to interact with that one incinerator. Oh. Uh. Hello? Oh, okay, that's not the same guy. That's that's good, then. That would have been awkward if he actually confronted us in here. You're surprised to see a man apparently living here in the crypt. He appears equally surprised to see you. Yeah, no wonder. Oh, hello. You startled me. My name is Hashem. I'm sorry if you are here to visit a loved one. The inner crypt is currently closed. I don't know when or if the inner crypt will ever be reopened. Now, if you'll pardon me for being so rude, I have to ask you to leave. I'm currently working on a very important project and don't have time for visitors. Hmm. I need access to the inner chamber immediately. I have permission from the rig. I mean, that's a, a decent bluff. Hashem looks at you suspiciously. I mean, I do have the key. Obviously, I wouldn't have that if I didn't have his, his, uh, you know, um, what's the word? Permission. Hashem looks at you suspiciously. Well, help yourself. You'll need the key, which I think Lurie keeps in his office, but I'm not going back in the inner crypt with you. There's a... well, it's not very safe. You're on your own. Hashem turns back to his book. Now, I must get uh, I must get back to my research. Good day to you. Sure, fair enough. At least he's not going to make a fuss or try to get me kicked out here. Hmm. Well, I mean... I'm not going to steal from him right under his nose. 
not only would that be stupid because he I, I'm pretty sure I was in line of sight of him so that would have been just very bad but also you know role playing and all that I guess I just didn't see this connection here, maybe? Or maybe I didn't decide just to go the other way first. Huh, who knows. But this way was... This way was just closed and there was a lever on the other side and this place... This way was also locked, uh, a locked gate, right? And yeah, it, it clicked when stepping there, but nothing else happened, so... This is the only way corridor here is the only way that I'm that I know about. Okay, this connects to a large room. And this looks like well it, it will eventually just lead back to the main room. Okay. Hmm. Single lever, two gates. Is this the main crypt? Who knows? Either way, none of these can be opened, right? Oh well, this can be opened. Hmm. Oh, more bats. That's fine. I don't know if Nashim's warning was supposed to hint at undead or just dangerous animals that infest the crypt. I mean, we haven't heard anything about any undead at all, so I don't know if they even exist in this world, in this game. But what fantasy game is there without any undead, right? Oh. Okay, interesting. Instant... Salamander ambush. Thankfully these beasts are pretty stupid. Not expecting that. Okay. And there was absolutely nothing in there. Okay. Better. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I'm not going to take the skulls necessarily. I guess, yeah, I already took like five skulls from some sort of chest. But I'm not just going to steal bones from, from a coffin. this room down here, I think. Could just have been some kind of minor side room. What? Knock some Ender attacks? What? Oh! I did not see that thing. Oh, of course I'm poisoned. Oh, and there's another one. Oh no. Yeah. Oh. Well, my torch just went out. Wait, oh, there is an oxymander. I mean, I doubt that the poison is going to run out fast enough. You know what? Let's find out if you die from poison. Oh, wait. Okay, you do. I guess I just... I must have actually regained one health point, one hit point, just the turn before I lost another one. That's why it looked for a second like I didn't actually lose an HP, but yeah. Okay, uh, restore, quick save, where was that? Oh, that's right, I remember. Oh, well, I mean, that was not my plan. 
I also didn't know that you could literally st be standing in front of a, of a container and just keep reloading until you get the loot that you want. I mean, I didn't do that on purpose. Also, I still don't have any arrows, so the usefulness right now is limited, but I'll take it. So I guess, yeah, even the ones that were just completely empty have a chance to have loot. Interesting. What I should do is lure any enemies into the light of this torch here and then fight with my shield out at least. Is it going to come? Seems like it. If I was really smart, I would stand in the shadows. Actually, I'm, I'm not very smart, though, as it turns out. So I completely messed up the timing. Also, changing equipment in the menu apparently doesn't take up turns. Good to know. Wait, shouldn't I be concealed in shadows? Hold on. No, I want to see. Okay. Yeah, that works. It's just considerably darker here than I thought it was necessary. I thought this was already enough. Huh, that's good to know, though. So I can make use of that. Of the light radius of torches. Hello? So I'll just lure it over here. Come on. Okay, there it, there it is. So I stand here, right? And I attack it without any negative to hit. But it only has a 38%, I guess. That's good. I'm still taking quite a bit of damage from it. I once again didn't realize that I was so low on health. Oh, wow. I did not expect to actually take that much damage. I thought I was safe for at least one hit. Uh, that was... Uh, yeah, that was unnecessary, I know. But hey, this is after killing the first one, right? Wait, is it? Did I actually... No, wait, this is before finding the first one. Still have the torch out, okay. I was gonna say, it didn't deal that much damage to me, right? As both of them combined did, which is bad enough. Okay, so I stand here. The torch went off by itself, that's fine. And I get poisoned immediately and take a crit right afterward. Oh boy. Freaking knocks some manners. I mean, yeah, I killed one, but at what price? At what cost? Uh, I, mean, I suppose I'll keep going like this for now. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, Commander, hello. There it is. I wonder, I mean, I don't see any light sources, but obviously some of these tiles are better lit than others. I don't know. Might as well just use this tile here that I know works. Sure, let's drink another potion, whatever. I'm most likely not going to survive this anyway, but might as well give it an honest try. Killed it. And it sounds like there are no more enemies. Maybe? Uh, I might actually be hearing something still. Oh, what? Zero percent. Um, a very rare dwarven crafted tumbler lock. Hmm. 
Okay. So, game's telling me that I'm supposed to find a key, right? That being said, oh, I'm, I really don't want a quick save though. I'm tempted to try bashing the door and just to see whether it's possible to bash it. But I'm also afraid of breaking my sword on the first on the first hit. I'm not going to risk it. I'd also really like for this poison to run out before I have to take another potion. That would be amazing. I'm gonna walk back in utter darkness. Yeah, I don't know, maybe Maybe my eyes are actually adjusting to the darkness in game. Is that even possible? Because I could certainly vaguely see my character in the the corridor he was walking in. Whereas previously, I I swear it was just completely dark in some of those rooms. this room. Did I never go in here? Maybe I did. Yeah, I am still poisoned. Damn it. This room appears to be filled with dozens of shallow unmarked graves. The air here is very damp and cold. Centipedes and worms wriggle through the, s the overturned soil at your feet. Nice. Oh, wait, never mind. That's a bat. That's another bat, actually. Why don't we wait out here? We are down to two hit points. One hit point, still poisoned. <sighs> okay. One more potion. I doubt this is gonna work out. Sure, I'll rest here. Oh, I actually. I can't believe that worked. I suppose I must have been incredibly lucky. I think it actually my my health actually went down to one point, and then I was healed. Huh. Okay. I mean, I'll take it. Uh, Thirty should be okay, right? Thirty-ish. Sure. <sighs> right. I have my shield. Um. I mean, bats are not so bad. It's quite a few of them, but. Yeah, I also can't really fight them in utter darkness, so... Back to no shield it is. Come here. Close to another level up, which is nice. Um, okay, well, we're too far. That's fine. Mostly. Although, once again, this. Okay. This bat was just starting to kick my butt quite a bit more than I would like. And there's obviously a concealed. Oh! What? You just literally walked through? That's a thing, huh? That was just an illusory wall. Interesting. Save the game. Oh, would this be Master Lurik's office with his key? Hmm, maybe. Secrets of uh, Transferencer. Oh, perfect. That's the book I was supposed to get for the uh, magic shop lady. Huh. Well, how convenient. Healing Elixir 1. Well, that makes up for our losses partially. Leather gloves one. Yep, same as we're using. You open the book to a page that has been marked. If everything has been prepared correctly, the ethereal salts, the divining crystals, and of course the required symbolic pentagram, 
You should now be able to activate the circuit via the aforementioned gateway incantation. The incantation binds the gates and completes the circuit. If this is your first attempt at creating a transference circuit, it is best to make a short distance version in a controlled environment and test it thoroughly to ensure that you missed no instructions. Only after you've perfected the process should you attempt to create one outside your lab. It is important to remember that the transference circuit will remain active essentially forever until it has been properly destroyed. The destruction process is complicated and is not covered here. For more information on that, uh, consult Cyrus Ortimer's book, Deconstructing Portals and Gateways. Huh. Okay, I mean, I'm getting bad flashbacks to um, Linda's demon summoning shenanigans in uh, Avernum, but I'm sure the magic shop lady knows what she's doing. Oh, well, these work, I guess. Now we know what Lurik has been doing in his free time. Huh. Interesting. Also, come on. thanks for the torches. Wait, we cannot... This is not... Oh, that's not a torch, that's a, a brazier. Well then. So this is interesting. I mean, the fact that the map just... Or not just the map, but the uh, just the, the game view. Hello. Those are new. You just spawned there. You cheaters. Wait. Oh. Uh-oh. Come on. Alright. Come here. I guess they can't see me while I'm behind the wall? Well, I don't know. Maybe they can actually see me. For all intents and purposes, in the game it, it, it seems like there actually is no wall here. And yeah, I mean, in this situation it's very obvious that there must be some sort of passage there, so... Yeah, I wasn't expecting to just walk through. Also, we did not actually find the key for that Dwarven lock, which is bad. Hmm. I mean, certainly, um, Hashem wouldn't wouldn't have been referring to the key to enter this, this crypt in the first place, right? Because obviously we have that. But since we did not yet find what we were supposed to get here, the uh, amulet from that noble's casket. Um, there must be a way to get behind that door that does not involve picking the lock. Or bashing the door, I guess. In other words, the key must be attainable. Hmm. But if this is not his office, then what is? Or did we get the key and I... No. no, we certainly did not. Hmm. Well. You know what? I'm going to call it an episode here. Uh, I have no idea how long this dungeon is going to take me to complete, especially since now it looks like I'm going to have to maybe retrace my steps and look around a bit more. Something that I might just do off-camera, just, you know, maybe look at some of the less obvious places, maybe talk to the guy again and see if I missed something crucial, some kind of hint. It's because I feel like I should already have the key at this point. Maybe I just missed something somewhere along the way. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna make a cut here and we'll continue exploring this place and probably picking up that amulet next time. As always, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.